Talk about a highly anticipated division series. We've got it for you in our nation's capital. Bryce Harper, two years ago, the MVP, leads the Washington Nationals against last year's MVP, Chris Bryant, and the reigning champions, the Chicago Cubs. The 2017 National League Division Series is presented by T-Mobile. Cubs and Nationals ready to go here from Nationals Park in Washington. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. I'm Ernie Johnson. This is Ron Darling. They're going to throw the first pitch here in just a couple of minutes, so we'll be brief. But it's here's the deal. It still sounds strange to say the Cubs bidding for a repeat after you go 108 years, but they are. Washington, meantime, just trying to get over the postseason home. You know, but don't fall asleep on the Chicago Cubs. Yes, their first half was uh, less than what you'd like to see. But other than the Cleveland Indians, they were the best team in baseball in the second half. And Chris Bryant and others are playing their best baseball in the second half. And when you look at the Washington Nationals, since 2012, many of us have thought that they're going to win one World Series or two in that time. They have not even reached a league championship series. This is their time. They have deepness. They have enough pitching, and Dusty Baker ha doesn't have one, and he needs one. Got uh, Steven Strasburg on the mound in the opener for Washington against Kyle Hendricks. Well, the thing about Strasburg, remember, he only has one postseason start, but he got down the stretch. He was 5 0 with an 0.57 ERA. He's pitching the best baseball he ever has for the Washington Nationals. Cannot wait to get this thing going as we check out the batting order for the Chicago Cubs. The switch hitter who would play anywhere. Ben Zobris leads it off, then Chris Bryant. Anthony Rizzo, who leads the Cubs in home runs and RBIs, hits third, then it's the catcher, Wilson Contreras. Kyle Schwarber hits fifth, then it's Russell, Hayward, Baez, and Hendricks. Our starting pitching profile is presented by State Farm. Well, you see the numbers on Strasburg. He has just been unbelievable. Only 28 starts because he missed a few with some problems with his elbow, but he is feeling as good as he's felt all year long. And I think that a lot of talk went into this game. Max Scherzer is going to start game three. Steven Strasburg, to me, represents what the Washington Nationals need to make it to the league championship series or beyond. Defensive. Yeah, go ahead. Defensively for the Nationals, they can see sixth in the National League with their 985 fielding percentage. More importantly, they got some gold as with Matt Wieters behind the plate, but Ryan Zimmerman got his gold glove as a third baseman. A lot of speed in the outfield with Worth, Taylor, and Harper. Rendon is one of those players to me that not a lot of people know about unless you watch this national team all year. He's the guy that can play defense. He's an amazing hitter. He can do it all. And if you don't at least have him in that MVP conversation, you're missing out. Had a tremendous year, as have a lot of these Washington Nationals. You look at the years they've had around that infield, too, and then you got Bryce Harper coming back from the injury in August. And this place will be buzzing. 41,000 plus, mostly in red. You do have some Chicago Cub blue scattered around Nationals Park. And I'll tell you one thing. The way we began this evening with Representative Steve Scalise throwing out the first pitch to David Bailey, the Capitol Police Special Agent. Oh, my goodness, was that a goosebump moment. We're ready for baseball. Strasburg always pitching out of the stretch. Delivers to Zobris, who grounds it to first, and Zimmerman takes it himself. Out number one. A couple things happened to Strasburg. He felt like his slider that he was throwing was giving him a lot of elbow pain. He junked that pitch. And the other thing he junked was the full windup. He figured that he's big and strong enough at six foot five. 240 pounds that he doesn't need that extra push off from the windup. He goes straight from the stretch and since then 
his mechanics have been very precise. 15 and 4, Strasburg's record. After the All Star break, 6 and 1, ERA under 1. Brown takes a strike. 0 oh and 1. Nationals with the shift on Bryant, the MVP. Strasburg has three pitches. His fastball, his slider, more like a slur, sorry, and his changeup. They're all white bound. When he's ahead in the count, Strasburg gets strikeouts 47% of the time. And that just went up. If you look at his percentage of strikeouts, fastball 36%, change 31%, and there, curveball at 28%. So two up and two down now, and here's Anthony Rizzo. Among the National League leaders, he was ninth in home runs, fifth in RBIs. but strikes from Strasburg to start. Again, the big shift with Murphy in short outfield. Strasburg had a start against the Cubs on June 28. 28, 26 swings and misses. He's well on his way. in the ball. On their feet early here at Nationals Park. Well, that's what you call an efficient top half of the first inning.
we welcome you back. Leading it off for the Nats will be Trey Turner, then Bryce Harper, Anthony Rendon, and Daniel Murphy in the cleanup spot. He lives for this time of year. Ryan Zimmerman had a huge comeback, bounce back year. Jason Wirth, the left fielder. Matt Wieters, the former Oriole behind the plate. The speedy Michael Taylor in center and Strasburg doing the pitching. And our starting pitching profile presented by State Farm as we take a look at Kyle Hendricks. If Steven Strasburg does it with precision and power, Kyle Hendricks does it with precision and guile. Fastball and changeup are his two best pitches. That's what he'll strike you out on. This curveball really is a get you over pitch to get him back in the counts. Turner takes a strike. Marked out by Corey Blazer behind the plate. The 1-1. One -one. Well hit the short, but Russell. There is no time to check the seams on the baseball when Turner's running. One down. Third member of our crew is Sam Ryan. Sammy. Hey, guys. And Kyle Hendricks missed about six weeks midseason tendonitis in his pitching hand. Now he told me the difference for him and if you notice his allowed one or fewer runs in his last three starts of the season he made a slight mechanical adjustment. He found that his arm was dragging and he was rushing so about four to five weeks since coming off the DL he finally got his timing back and if you look at his ERA from August through October it dipped to 2.19 in that span guys. All right. Thank you Sam. Here's Bryce Harper. Harper had the injury when he slipped on the bag trying to leg out a hit at first base and hyper extended his knee had a bone bruise in there and missed a bunch of time just came back late in September that happened in early August and so what they were encouraged about here in Washington was the fact that he really barreled a couple of balls on Sunday the last day of the regular season August 12th is when he slipped on the bag he's had 18 at bats in the last eight weeks. Hit that one on the nose and it's going to fall into right for a base hit. Harper aboard. On the single to right. How is Harper going to feel? The Washington Patriots here got their answer. A little fastball inside quick enough to turn on it and drop that in front of the right fielder Zobrist. In honor of Las Vegas. Harper shoes. Pray for Las Vegas, they read. And there was a taped message from him and from Chris Bryant, another Las Vegas native, before the game tonight. So here's Anthony Rendon. Hit 301, 25 homers, 100 runs batted in, and he takes a strike. Unlike a lot of hitters today Rendon is his own style very handsy hitter got off to a slow start this year and then he had a game where he went six for six with three home runs and ten RBIs hasn't looked back since that'll get you going. <laughs> Didn't mean to and fouled it over there toward his teammates in the Washington dugout on the first base side. So quickly no balls and two strikes to a good two strike hitter. Hendricks has the ability with his changeup to not only tail it away from the left handed hitter but almost cut it away from the right handed hitter one of the few pitchers you will ever see who can do that. Inside the numbers presented by SoFi, a modern finance company. And you see his home runs and the quadrant, so that ball down and in. All well, he's an equal opportunity home run hitter, that's yeah, for sure. He covers the whole quadrant. Harper with the lead at first. And again, Rendon fouls it away. Hendricks is 27 years old and they call him the professor went to Dartmouth 
Got his economics degree. And dare I say, he has been money for Joe Madden. <laughs> Maybe I should not dare say that. <laughs> I'll warn you next oh, time oh. I'm going to crack one of those out. Or how dare you. <laughs> <laughs> He's also got one of the best pickoff moves to first. He's picked off seven this year. He won the NLCS game six last year, sending the Cubs to the World Series. Breaking pitch, a ball and two strikes. Got to run the gauntlet in this Washington order. They got past Turner, who's so fast it could really be a game changer or a series changer. Got him on a ground out. Harper's at first, Rendon up there, and Murphy waiting on deck. Just a little number up towards first. And Hendricks able to throw him out for the second out. Well, when you look at the pitch grips for Kyle Hendricks, it's all pretty natural. The two seam fastball, that middle finger over the horseshoe of the grip. The most important, though, look at his circle change. He all crosses his thumb with his pointer finger. So the circle grip you usually meet at the fingertips. He decides to cross the fingers over. That's the unique. Part of his changeup. Yeah, the two seam and the four seam. It's the old, hey, throw it with the seams or against the seams or across the seams. And he's got them both. And, and here's Murphy, who homered twice off Hendricks earlier this season. And there's a bullet into the glove of Rizzo. That's three, Anthony. Well, Maybe they'll give us four, four outs, say the Cubs, when we go to the second. <laughs>
line drive out to Anthony Rizzo off the bat of Daniel Murphy. He thought there were only two outs. Bryce Harper let him know there's three outs every <laughs> inning, bro. <laughs> and he probably did say bro. <laughs> <laughs> Top half of the second now. And Wilson Contreras leads it off for Chicago. You know, you, you talk a lot about Bryant and Rizzo. And this guy, Wilson Contreras, has been so big for Joe Madden's crew. 276, 21 homers, 74 runs batted in, and it's the job he's done behind the plate. Uh, behind the plate, it's been sensational. Well, they were looking for a leadoff hitter all year long. They were also looking for a cleanup hitter all year long. They thought it was going to be Kyle Schwarber, either leading off, which he did at the beginning of the year, or maybe in the middle of the year. It was Contreras batting fourth, and the numbers that he produced is why he's there tonight. Strasburg ahead in the count, 0-2. One ball, two strikes, here it comes. Third strikeout for Strasburg, and third straight. Well, I would describe the strike zone so far as, per, as pretty pitcher friendly so far from Corey Blazer. That should help Hendricks, and certainly so far, it's helping Strasburg. Contreras didn't like it. Can't argue too much when you're the catcher. Here's Schwarber. You think back to the year he had last year when he was just, he was limited to a couple of games, was injured early in the year, came back, and was able to be an impact guy in the World Series for the Chicago Cubs. Folks kind of forgot as he struggled here early in 17. He was coming off injury. This is in the air to left, and Jason Worth, who has plenty of room. But he did come back for the World Series, and boy, did they use him as a DH. Live every postseason moment with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. It's the only place to get it all. Live radio feeds, video highlights, pitch tracking, stat cast, and much more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Here's the shortstop, Addison Russell. See Russell's no numbers, very pedestrian compared to the ones last year, but off the field issues, six weeks missed because of a foot issue. He has a little streak he'd like to see end here in the NLDS. Is at least one strikeout in nine straight games, which is nothing like the Aaron Judge 37 game streak, but a streak nonetheless. Three balls and no strikes. There's a handful of pitchers in baseball that when they take the mound, the crowd gets heated up from the beginning, thinking, no hitter, perfect game. Strasburg is one of those. He has that kind of stuff as he brings the 3 0, and that's a strike. I can remember doing Atlanta games back in 2010 in that first year of. Uh, Strasmus as they go. There were a, a bunch of nicknames <laughs> for that phenomenon that we saw. Russell pops it back. Make it three and two. But he came on and was just such a sensation. And then would wind up having Tommy John surgery in September of 2010.
Just his second career postseason start. The 3 2. And that breaking pitch just missed. First base runner for the Cubs is Russell with a two out walk. That'll bring up Jason Hayward. Playing center field tonight. Right field is his normal position, but wanted to get Schwarber in the lineup. Joe Madden's explanation it's hard to get four or five hits in a row off Strasburg. So we'll put up the guys who can hit the ball out of the ballpark. This is the first time he has played center field in this ballpark as he stands in and looks at a curveball. What an out. Hayward, who started his career with the Braves in the National League East, his numbers against Strasburg, 405 with a home run. And he's plenty got plenty of at bats in there, 15 for 37. Dusty Baker trying to get the Nationals to the League Championship Series, which has eluded the Nats in 12, 14, and 16. I mean, let's face it, Dusty has everything in his resume you would want to have as a player, as a manager, except for that big ring. That would complete it. Manager of the year three times with the Dodgers. Got a World Series ring as a player with the Dodgers in 81. In the air to right. Harper. Cubs going to walk. Can't do anything with it. Bottom half of the second.
look at tonight's playmakers presented by Alpha Romeo. Ryan Zimmerman gets set to lead it off here in the bottom of the second. You know, I, went, I remember when Zimmerman first was drafted out of the University of Virginia. He signed right away. He said, I want to start my professional career as soon as I can so I can be brought up as soon as I can. You know what year he's brought up? 2005, that year. He was their first ever draft choice. And he leads it off here in the bottom of the second. And what a resurgent season it has been. When you consider last year, he hit 218 with 15 home runs and 46 runs batted in in 115 games. This season, 303, 36 long balls, 108 yeah. RBIs. And you can look to part of it as being you know, this new thought process. Yeah. It's one espoused by Daniel Murphy, certainly a launch angle and just trying to get the ball in the air, barrel it and hit it in the air. But another big factor in Zimmerman's mind is simply pride. Yeah, I, I think it's pride. And also you have to remember, this guy was one of the best fielding third basemen you'll ever see. Various injuries, especially to his arms, uh, his arm made him change positions to first base. Took him a while to get comfortable over there, and now he's comfortable defensively, and of course now offensively. The one-two is fouled out of play. He's been with this organization through thick and thin, and I'm sure he wanted to be a big part of it as they take maybe their best shot at it this year. He was also born in Washington, North Carolina. Two balls and two strikes. Just about half the strikeouts from Hendricks come from either his fastball or his changeup. Takes a little too much time for Zimmerman's liking, and he steps out. Tied for sixth in home runs, was sixth in RBIs. Up toward third, that'll be easy for Bryant, who throws across, one down. So we've seen with Rendon with the topper to Hendricks on the 1 3 play. This one, 5 3, top ball to Chris Bryant. The thing about Kyle Hendricks is why he finished third in the Cy Young Award last year when he won 16 games. He's so adept at staying out of the middle of the plate and gets a lot of soft contact. Soft contact produces lots of outs. Now here's Jason Worth. Been such a fan favorite here in Washington. In the final yeah. year of a seven year deal, we wait and see if there's more to the career of Jason Worth, but they had a great send off for him the other day, our great retrospective on his career video tribute. Don't want to call it a send off yet, but a tribute. And he's up there against Hendricks, count of one and one. the term gamer this guy comes right to mind well when they signed him to the big contract there was a lot of piece, people in baseball who were like what because really the cornerstones of that Phillies team were Rollins Utley and Howard but they brought worth to Washington because of his winning ways on the corner for a called strike three the first K for Kyle Hendricks well, if you're a pitcher, you're going to like Corey Blazer behind the plate. So far, anything that's close, even a little off the plate, you're getting the benefit of the doubt. And that's going to make it tough on the hitters, or they're going to have to adjust and start swinging early. Here is the switch hitting catcher, Matt Wieters, a former Oriole. And he takes a strike. Of a lot of pitchers with Tommy John surgery. Weeders is a catcher who had that surgery. 
And now it takes a pitch off the leg. That was a breaking pitch. No harm done. He's at first with two down. It's easy for you to say as Matt Wieters <laughs> runs that off down first base. Just a breaking ball came in. Wieters had no chance to get out of the way. Hit him right on the right ankle. High right ankle. So what are we? From the plate to here, how, how far are we, would you estimate, Ronnie? Uh, 200 feet. Yeah, see, I never felt it. It was... <laughs> It was just fine. Oh, you're fine. Good. I'm gonna I'm gonna kick you under the <laughs> desk and see how it feels. Here's Michael A. Taylor. Yeah. Swinging out of the eight hole. Here in the bottom half of the second. Well, this is the first year that Michael A. Taylor has hit for a better average. Lots of home runs, tremendous power, tremendous talent. But 137 strikeouts also. Wide drive, base hit to left. Schwarber over to field it. A big turn by Wieters, and then he retreats to second. Second hit for the Nats. Well, really, the first mistake I've seen Hendricks make so far. A ball in that didn't get in. Taylor with the line drive. Nice job by Schwarber, who's playing very deep to get over there. He has a good arm and kept Wieters at second base. Second time the Nats have had a runner in scoring position in as many innings. And here's Strasburg. He's not an automatic out. He's hit two home runs this year and knocked in three runs. As pitchers go, I don't think anyone would confuse Steven Strasburg with a good hitting pitcher. But he is from that school of swing hard in case you hit it. Because he's such a big man, the ball travels a long way. He waits on a 1-1 as Nats lead from first and second. Didn't mean to. That is a fair ball. Hendricks gets over there for the putout. Two innings in the books in D.C. on TBS.
Home runs mean more this postseason as T-Mobile is guaranteeing at least a million dollars for hurricane recovery efforts with every home run hit worth $10,000. Help break a million by tweeting hashtag HR for HR. And T-Mobile will donate an additional $1 per tweet. We move to the top half of the third. Javi Baez, the guy who never gets cheated at the plate, cuts through that one 0-1. Despite his wild swinging ways, Baez found a way to hit 273, and it really tells you how talented this young player is. Whew. You know, there's oh. a fine line between that plate discipline and having that aggressive nature. And Baez right now is more aggression than discipline that ever comes together. What an offensive player he could become. Ronnie, would you ever throw him a ball in the strike zone? I would try not to. Strasburg in three pitches. Sits Baez down. Fourth strikeout. Fourth strikeout, two on changeups, one on a curveball, one on a fastball. This is his change. Two fastballs up, and then the disappearing changeup. Hitters hate when I say that it's unhittable. That was close. Here's Hendricks. Twenty seven pitches 19 of them strikes seems like even more than that. From Strasburg. And quickly ahead 0 2. Ernie how our main man with the stats just gave me something. It's the first postseason game so far that it's been scoreless after two innings. We have seen some offensive outbursts and we're still so early in this 2017 postseason. Hendricks taking a good rip up there. Stays at 0 2. Hendricks only five for 50 this year but turned those five hits into five RBI. Throw his opposite number, that nasty change right there. This reminds me of the atmosphere when he first came up for his first start. I remember that they nationally televised it. He faced the Pittsburgh Pirates and he struck out 14 in seven innings. This has the same feel. Strikeout number five, and it brings us back to the top of the Cubs order and Ben Zobrist, who swung at the first pitch and grounded it to first his first time. And he swings at the first pitch again. And sends it into right. Making it look easy in DC.
Bleacher Report connects you to the stories, teams, players, and moments that matter in sports culture. Download the free Bleacher Report app and stay dialed in to the MLB playoffs. We appreciate you being tuned in here on TBS to game one of the NLDS between the Cubs and the Nationals. Scoreless as we go to the bottom half of the third. Top of the order, Trey Turner for Washington. Turner just 24 years old. Got as much speed as you could possibly want. Rounded out his first time. He was the uh, player to be named later in a deal that involved the Padres, and the Nats, and the Rays. Will Myers went to the Padres. Turner and Joe Ross came here to Washington. Shortstop by trade. Spent some time in center field. And then this year, they signed Adam Eaton to be the center fielder and make Trey Turner the everyday shortstop here in Washington. Yeah, his natural position. In fact, he was the player to be traded much later because he, uh, under the rules of baseball at the time, he was traded within a six-month period, so he had to stay with the Padres a little longer before he could join Washington, even though he'd been traded to them. Little tapper back to the mound. Hendricks throws him out. Moments ago, Sam Ryan with Cubs manager Joe Madden. Joe, a couple runners on, but Kyle able to get out of it. What are you seeing from him in this one? Velocity is way up. I don't even know if he's throwing the fastball through his normal break. He's got really a, a good fastball. The changeup, he's kept out of it to this point. I think you'll see more changes maybe this next time through the batting order. No curveballs yet, but the velocity is good. On the other side, Stephen out there on the mound, and how frustrated are your your, your batters right Not now? Not yet. I mean, honestly, uh, that ball, that's a pretty good swing by Zoe right there. It was a good swing by Jason Hayward also. Uh, I thought Addy had a great at-bat by taking pitches outside of the zone. First time through, he's kind of jacked up with the audience here, too. Let's see how we uh, do the next time through. Thanks a lot, Joe. Pleasure. Thanks. All right, thanks to Sam and to Joe Madden. Who is watching Kyle Hendricks work here in the bottom half of the third with one down. Bryce Harper who singled his first time. Our 15 minutes with each manager before the game is the best 15 minutes in sports for us. They are just so entertaining and a variety of interests for both gentlemen. Including the, their great knowledge of the game. The 1-1 one -one on the way. Well that is one spot when he first came up that Bryce Harper could be attacked that fastball up and away running away likes the ball down in the zone always has good breaking ball hitter. Hendricks a technician on that mound. Not going to blow you away, but he will think his way through a game. He's like a chess master. Each pitch has a purpose. Each pitch in itself has a purpose, and it sets up the next pitch, or sometimes even two pitches later. Contreras putting down fingers, and here comes the pitch. And Harper strikes out for out number two. Second strikeout for Hendricks, and it brings up Anthony Rendon. 60 of his 123 strikeouts this year came on the changeup. And not only is it a pitch that he takes the speed off the baseball, but with that grip, he has the ability for that. It's really a power change. It just explodes down and out of the zone late. Rendon grounded to the pitcher his first time. Big tantalizing breaking pitch. 
for strike one. That's when he'll use it to get ahead of hitters. Sometimes when he's behind to get back in the count. But it's his third pitch behind his fastball and change. Side. Corey Blazer, home plate umpire, got Ron Culpa at first field and Culberth at second and Laz Diaz at third. And down the lines, Jerry Lane at left and Will Little in right. In the air to center field. But there's room for Jason Hayward. One, two, three inning for the first time for Kyle Hendricks. We head to the fourth. The 2017 National League Division Series is presented by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. End of the top half of the fourth inning. Scoreless in game one of the best of five. Chris Bryant leads it off. The Nationals swing three infielders to the left side. Bryant struck out his first time, one of five by Strasburg. So you got San Diego State on the mound and San Diego at the plate. Bryant's got a rookie of the year and a, an MVP. On his mantle. At the tender age of 25. Yeah, didn't quite have the same season he had last year in all categories. But got hot when the Cubs got hot in the second half. This ball up and in. This really wasn't a check swing, it was how do I get out of the way? Two balls and a strike.
breaking pitch. That thing is devastating. Two and two. That's the one that frustrates the hitters because it's right at him and it kind of breaks over the inside part of the plate. Bryant didn't like it, but Blazer did. Just the change. The four fingers. Strikeout number six for Strasburg. Moments ago, Sam Ryan with Dusty Baker. Dusty, we saw how strong Steven was towards the end of the season. Obviously, his first playoff start since 2014. What are you seeing? Well, what I'm seeing is a guy with a lot of confidence and poise, and uh, it looks like right now he can get everything all over the plate at any time. You know, like he's really, he really got it going on right now. Just saw that one was well hit, but a couple of base runners on. What do you see from your at-bats? Well, from my at-bats, I mean, you have to kind of like corner him because he's going to tease you. He's going to work the ball in and out, so we just got to be patient until we get a pitch to hit. Thanks a lot, Dusty. All right, you're welcome. To, to quote Dusty, uh, Strasburg got it going on here. He's got it going on, and, and talking about Hendricks, he almost almost evoked the roper dope that Hendricks is employing so far. No balls and two strikes. 28 of his 38 pitches have been for strikes. You know, Rizzo had a tremendous season, 32 home runs, but only one in his last 93 at bats. as a hitter you just feel so defensive with the three weapons that Strasbourg has when he gets you 0 2. Well, one of the good things about Rizzo is that unlike a lot of power hitters he chokes up on that bat and he takes a good two strike approach really cuts down on that swing and tries to put the ball in play. Strikeout number seven for Strasburg. In this game of baseball, most offenses will tell you they're trying to dictate the at bats to the pitcher. But when you're Strasburg or a pitcher of his ilk and have that kind of stuff, you start dictating the at bats. Franchise postseason record. And we're in the fourth. <laughs> Max, he's, you're in trouble. He's faced 12 hitters and struck out seven of them. Here's Contreras, who took a called third strike his first time when he let off the second. Interesting defense employed by the Nationals. See how far in the hole Trey Turner is. You don't usually see that. Everything up the middle, pretty much a hit for Contreras. Hits it right at Daniel Murphy, who makes a sensational stop and throws him out. Right where Murph was playing. And he made a great play.
Today's upcoming schedule is presented by Infinity Empower to Drive. Still to come tonight on TBS, Diamondbacks and Dodgers game one, Chavez Ravine. Tomorrow it's all National League. Coverage beginning at 4.30. We've got the Cubs and Nats at 5.38, followed by the Diamondbacks and Dodgers. Daniel Murphy leads it off in the bottom half of the fourth against Kyle Hendricks. Boy, Murphy is one of the rare players that has almost had two careers. While in a Met uniform, he hit for a high average, around 280. Not a lot of power. But ever since the 2015 postseason, when he hit four home runs and batted 529 as the Mets swept the Cubs, he's been a totally different player. Well over 300 hitter with lots of pop. Completely has remade himself into one of the best offensive players in baseball. Hit one right on the nose his first time, lined it into the glove of Rizzo at first. Three balls and no strikes. You're going to let him go, 3 0? Oh? Yes, you can. Leading off an inning, though, maybe not. Nine. Lead off walk here in the fourth. Statcast powered by Amazon Web Services. And you see the uh, backhand stop by Murphy to end the top half of the fourth. Most of the time when we see 110 miles an hour, it's in the air and it's a home run. That ball hit that hard on the ground. Cubs were bidding for their first hit of this game off Strasburg, and Murphy said he's having none of that. Now here's Zimmerman. Tried to check his swing. Oh, got the safe call down there at first from Ron Culpa. Boy, oh, it looked from up here like he had gone. Zimmerman had the face of a child after he takes a cookie. You know, got I can't away with it. Yeah, <laughs> can't believe it. Hendricks struggling to find the plate here in the bottom half of the fourth. Well, pitchers know it. When you're facing another pitcher who's run through your order, like Strasburg has done it, you start to feel a little bit like, boy, I can't give up anything either. And as precise as Hendricks is, he's been a little too precise on the first two hitters. There's a strike, two balls, and one strike with Harper at, with the Murphy at first after the leadoff walk. Zimmerman had a routine grounder to Bryant at third his first time. Shattered his bat. That's going to be a double play. Russell Baez and Rizzo as easy as you please two down. Just tells you the magic of Hendricks. He misses with the first two pitches, throws a fastball for a strike, and then comes inside and breaks the bat of Zimmerman. And you don't get a prettier 6-4-3 than from the Cubs' middle infield. Not an easy hop for Russell, and Baez might have the best infield arm of all of baseball. So the leadoff walk is erased, and here's Jason Worth. All-star pitcher Ron Darling here to testify to the fact that indeed the double play ball is the pitcher's best friend. There's a lot of best friends for pitchers. One pitch, one out. I can go through all of them. <laughs> Worth has always been the same hitter ever since he came up. Always takes a lot of pitches, averages about four and a half pitches every at bat. He really tries to control the at bat by working the pitcher deep into the count. He's the he's the anti hobby bias. <laughs> yes. There's the free swinging Chicago second baseman. Two balls and a strike to worth. 
That sails well outside. Three and one. Well, not, gonna get, not gonna get worth this to chase much no. as disciplined a hitter as he is. These pitchers have been so good, you really notice when a hitter's got a pitcher's count. I mean a hitter's count. This is one. Worth trying to sell ball four, but it's strike two in the count full. In the air, down the line, and right Rizzo with a long run. Does he have any room? You know, it shuts out a little bit there. If he could have got around it, he might have had a shot, but he just ran into a wall. See, this wall juts out. If he could have got around it a little bit, he might have had some play, but, you know, this is not his home ballpark. Sometimes it's hard to know that. The payoff from Hendricks to Worth. Second walk of the inning. Hendricks high this year in bases on balls is four. That happened twice. He had seven games in which he walked one batter or nobody. Coming into this game, he had a streak of not walking a right handed hitter 93 straight and now has walked Jason Worth. Here's Matt Wieters who was hit by a pitch his first time and takes a strike. Here's a switch hitting catcher who was on the market all winter and could not find himself a job and was signed at the last minute by the Washington Nationals. Of course began his career just north of here in Baltimore. dive back worth noting that the first base coach of the Nationals is the legendary Davey Lopes still getting it done at the age of 72. Weeders fooled by that one one and two. We came into this game talking about Trey Turner and how much speed he has and the game changer he was. Well, in 1985, that was my second year in the major leagues. As a 40-year-old outfielder, Davey Lopes stole 47 bags for the Chicago Cubs. 557 bags in his career as, again, Hendricks throws over. It's a return to the Nats for Davey Lopes, who was first base coach here in 2006. A real student of the science of base running. Wieters goes down swinging to end the fourth. Who's going to blink in this one? We're heading to the fifth. Scoreless.
Presidents race here sometime, but again, it did not happen here during game one. He had a substantial lead before he was taken down by a variety of Nationals employees down there. Uh, those National employees must be Millennials and not know their history. They would not <laughs> have taken the real Teddy down, I'll tell you that. Big cut from Kyle Schwarber, but he's behind in the count 0 and 2. We are in the top half of the fifth inning. Again, Schwarber's in there. Joe Madden didn't think he could put a lot of hits together. They put nothing so far in there to knock one out of the park. No runs, two hits, no errors for the homestanding Nationals. Nothing across for the Cubs as we play in the fifth. Fastball up. You would think now he's thrown most of the pitches up in the strike zone, he's thrown them by Schwarber. Good time to bounce a changeup. Earlier this season, Schwarber was hitting a buck 71 and was sent to Triple A to work on his hitting. Wound up hitting 211 with 30 home runs. Schwarber fooled by Strasburg for out number one. Strikeout number eight for the right hander. You know, I was fortunate enough. To watch number 34 Nolan Ryan pitch a lot of ball games. This is Nolan Ryan like watching Strasburg pitch tonight. Total command, dominating, outstanding hitters, and with three pitches. Here's the only Cub to reach, and that was by a second inning walk, Edison Russell. On the ground to first. Zimmerman will take it himself and win that race. Two down. You know it's playoff baseball when it's a ground ball to the right side and the first baseman hustles to make that play. That's an easy 3 1 play during the regular season, but you don't want to have any exchange issues. I mean, regular season, you just toss this to Strasburg. Don't kill yourself. But Zimmerman makes the play tonight. Two up and two down here in the fifth. For Jason Hayward, who flied to right his first time. And as Joe Madden said, had maybe one of the best swings by the Cubs hitters tonight. There's another pretty good swing, and the ball hit to right center, but it's going nowhere except into the glove of Michael A. Taylor. One, two, three inning in a blink.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Eight, nine, and one do in the bottom half of the fifth inning for the Nats as they face Chicago's Kyle Hendricks in a scoreless game one of this NLDS best of five. You see Chris Bryant at third in on the grass. Taylor's got good speed. And he has one of the two Washington hits. Yeah. Singled in the first, Taylor in the second. Michael A. Taylor's had a chance to be the starting center fielder two or three times for the Washington Nationals, but the proclivity to strike out so much has kept him from being the everyday center fielder. He became a Kind of a pet project for Dusty Baker this year, and he had his best year. No, the Nats had gone out and gotten Adam Eaton to man center field, and then he uh, blew out his knee first month of the season. There's the guy they call Spanky. Checked his swing. Ron Culpa confirms that down at first. Well, Hendricks walked two in the fourth, but it didn't hurt him. Run the count full here against Taylor, leading off the fifth. Look out. Strasburg, the on deck hitter. Hoping he's called on to bunt Taylor over. Don't turn your back. Taylor just hit one in that direction. Chris Spire, the bench coach. High chopper. And that is a foul ball. Call made by Laz Diaz down there at third. A ball right on the line. Well, you talked about the line drive single. Good call by Diaz there. That ball well fouled. Taylor's had some good swings so far against Hendricks. Home plate umpire's call before the bag. Third base umpire's call after the bag. to third and Bryant got him by a step for the first out. We'll see if all that talk between Chris Spire and Steven Strasburg now is just a moot point. Or if Spire had something in mind for his Pitchers, Spire, the bench coach for Dusty Baker. Words of wisdom. No. Tapped wide of the mound. Hendricks throws him out. Two up and two down. Again, the soft contact that Hendricks is producing by changing speeds, keeping the ball under the bat, just making these plays look simple. Well, top of the order now with Trey Turner. Anthony Rizzo. Creeping in at first. And on the grass. Ryan doing the same at third. 
said earlier this guy can be a game changer and a series changer with his speed third in the National League in stolen bases if he gets on he can create havoc so far Hendricks has handled him on a couple of ground outs one to short and one back to him can't steal first base Turner's not a, a, a big player in fact a thin player but's got scary surprise power. Did hit 11 home runs this year hit 13 last season. He's behind in the count a ball and two strikes. Takes a call third strike to end the fifth. Got a good old fashioned pitcher's duel going on here at Nationals Park. The Art of Performance is presented by Jaguar. Jose Altuve went deep three times in game one. Astros also won game two, so they pushed the Red Sox to the brink in the ALDS. They had a base hit in the first inning right before Carlos Correa hit a two-run home run. Here's Javi Baez, who loves that first pitch and swings at it here. Fair ball, but then Rendon bobbled it, getting out of his glove. That's the play he's got to make. I thought that ball was foul. I don't like that call by Diaz, and I think that's why Rendon kind of played it nonchalantly. He thought it was foul also. That's an E5 on Rendon, and Baez aboard to lead off the sixth, and we are zipping right along here in NL DS game one. It's 
looked like Rendon when he brought that ball down, banged off his thigh yeah. and out of his glove. Well, here's the pitcher, Hendricks, who squares and lays it down. The tag is applied. Baez to second. And for the first time tonight, the Cubs have a runner in scoring position. Well, just a simple ground ball. And you're right, when he brought it down, he just lost control of it. I'm surprised it wasn't more of an argument, but that's one of those that is not reviewable because it was before the bag. Rendon, first error since July 22nd. Boy, little things can turn a game around like this. Ben Zobrist, top of the Cubs order. He's 0 for 2, has swung at the first pitch each time against Strasburg. Baez with a lead at second. Strasburg running it inside against Zobrist, who has struggled from that with pitches right there in the kitchen since the All Star break. Hit 162. On fastballs on the inside corner. Tried to check, but he went. Well, the kind of stuff Strasburg has tonight in this 0 0 game, he's trying to punch out Zobris. He doesn't want any contact. Contact to meet a bloop. We just saw an error by Rendon. Cubs looking for their first hit. And what a spot this would be with a runner at second and one out. Turner creeping in behind Baez at second. That ball's in the air to left center field. Taylor. Makes the catch. Baez with the tag. But he thinks better of it. You know, just the simplest of plays, but Taylor gets around that ball and in a position to throw. And any outfielder who does that will stop the runner at second base from taking a chance. Baez is in scoring position. He can't get thrown out there. So two down now for Chris Bryant. The reigning National League MVP is 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Into left field. That ball is foul. Broke his bat. Nice choice by Strasburg comes in and ties up Bryant. No chance for him to get the good part of the bat on that ball. Results in a broken bat. That was TBS Total Motion presented by Progressive. No balls, one strike. Now 0 and 2. So fastball inside, he counters with a changeup inside. Both hit foul by Bryant. How can you tell when it's a playoff game? Top of the sixth, 41,000 on their feet. Into right center field. That ball's going to get down, and that is going to break the scoreless tie. Baez scores. The throw to second. Bryant is safe, and the Cubs are on top. 1-0. Chicago's first hit 
results in the game's first run. Well, a key error to start the inning. And one of the few pitches that Strasburg misses. 0-2, fastball down, catches the middle of the plate. Bryant with good hitting to right field, and Baez with the first run. Good heads up by Bryant. It was over the cutoff man's head. Strasburg, who wasn't backing up home, made the play, but the throw late to get Bryant at second base. I believe New York is going to get involved in this now with the umpiring crew in Chelsea of Greg Gibson and Tom Hallian and James Hoy and Tim Timmons as we'll take a look at this play at second. Well that was a good snap tag by Trey Turner. And let's see if Bryant gets his hand. I don't know how they're going to change that call. They called him safe on the field. That's about as close as it gets. The important thing to remember on this is that Baez had already crossed the plate yeah, yeah. before this happened at second. Boy, that's as close as it gets. And, you know, it's supposed to be a play that they're looking at Chelsea that gives you a clear view that he was out so they can change the call. I don't think they can do it with that replay we're seeing. The words that are key here clear and convincing evidence to change a call field and Culbreth is the crew chief for this six man playoff crew meantime Strasburg trying to stay okay. loose and the verdict is safe at second. It's the right call, and it's a good, good base point running by Chris Bryant. He's tall, he's a power hitter, but he's one of the best base runners in the National League. That's bang, bang. It goes to Bryant. And it brings Anthony Rizzo to the plate. Like Bryant, he struck out his first two times. Always have to watch out. After a review, a pitcher's first pitch. Rizzo on first pitch's career, 371 hitter. So it's not his feet, it's where the ball is. Where's that ball? To me, it seems like it's in foul, foul territory. It doesn't matter where his feet is. Where's the ball when he catches it in the leather? There's Baez who has scored the game's only run. Well hit by Rizzo. Harper cannot make the play. That's going to score another run, and it's 2 0 Chicago. Hitless through five and two thirds. Back to back hits. Both score runs. 2-0 Chicago. Well, just a simple error on the first ball, and after that, the best hitters up. And what a try by Harper. Gets the leather on it, but can't secure it. I don't think it would have been a catch anyways. Kind of bounced right before it got to his glove. And the reaction from Rizzo, big base hit, and great running by Chris Bryant to take the extra base. Harper might be in trouble with that knee. What did Joe Madden say? Let's wait till the second or third time around for my guys to exactly, see how they do. Exactly what he told Sam Ryan. He liked a few of the at bats early when the Cubs bats were quiet. Held hitless before this sixth inning. But Bryant and Rizzo have done damage. And here's Contreras. It's a good step up by Strasbourg Rizzo who's built like a refrigerator but he can run a little bit and he'll try to steal a base every now and then 
especially with two outs to get in scoring position. Strasburg knew that, stepped off the mound. The Nats beat the Cubs four out of the seven meetings in the regular season. Contreras homered five times in those seven games. Strasburg untouchable through the first five. And now the champs have reached him for two runs in the sixth. Joe Madden before the game was this postseason a little different from last year he said yeah we're breathing a little better this year uh, before the first game and they look pretty relaxed despite the great stuff by Strasburg now with the two runs in the six well you think about last year coming into the postseason carrying the you know 108 years a lot of weight That's right But they come in here as the defending champions against a Washington team that's known nothing but disappointment in 12, 14, and 16. Losing game five at home in 12 and 16. Now 64 pitches for Strasburg who threw 52 through the first five innings. Reached out and tapped it up towards short. Turner with the jump throw. Something he does quite a bit on that ball. Hits slowly. Big inning for the Cubs.
beautiful moon over our nation's capital on a Friday night in the fall in game one of the National League Division Series between the Cubs and the Nats. Chicago breaking through with two in the sixth to break a scoreless tie. It's going to be Harper, Rendon, and Murphy here in the bottom half against Kyle Hendricks. Well, that's what the greatest thing about this game, isn't it? A guy can have no hit stuff and gives up a couple of runs, and he's going up against the pitcher, totally opposite. Ve very rarely breaks 90 miles an hour with his fastball. In today's game, pitchers like Hendricks are so rare, because only the guys who throw 95 plus get a chance. In the air to left field, Schwarber on the run, and he gets there for the first out. Well, that's a good play by Schwarber. That ball was hit off the end of the bat. He read it right and got a good break. He's playing a little bit towards left center. So he really got a great break on this ball to make that play. And his defense in left field can be an issue, but he's made two good plays tonight. Well, he's worked hard on it. On it. He's an incredibly hard worker. Let me correct one thing I said last inning when yeah. The review was underway. Crew chief is Jerry Lane, not Field and Tolbert on this crew. Okay. Jerry's been umpiring for a long time. He deserves that CC, crew chief. A ball and no strikes to Rendon, who Takes a strike. He's 0 for 2. Hits are even, two apiece, but Chicago pushing across a couple of runs in the top half of this inning. Woo! You know, Hendricks uh, shut down. Inning ERA. That means the inning after his team scores him some runs is 3.41. If you like the the art of pitching, you gotta love tonight. Strasburg and his great physical gifts and precision, and then Hendricks who. To me, is like a chess master out there. Each move, the counter your move. Soft contact once again, but that's out of play as Rendon popped it foul. 83 pitches now for Kyle Hendricks, whose high this season is 112. You could take our strike zone box, and at the end of the game, there would be probably less than 10 or 15 pitches that are inside that box. That's how precise Hendricks is. Only one of the five pitches in this at bat is inside the box. Rendon wouldn't chase the count is full. Three balls and two strikes. Four strikeouts. Two walks for Hendricks. In his five and a third. Mm. And Rendon coaxes a one out walk. Well, when the Cubs got swept out of the playoffs in 2015, it was mainly because of this hitter right here, Daniel Murphy. Four home runs in that series, hit over 500. And I was thinking going into this series, the Cubs were going to have to figure out a way to get Murphy out to get through the Nationals. He represents the tying run here in the bottom of the sixth and ah. takes a strike. He went deep twice against Kyle Hendricks in the same game on August 4th.
this game he has lined to first and walked and was erased by a walk by a Chicago double play. Second in the National League and hitting behind Charlie Blackman. Hitting 322. And that got Corey Blazer behind the plate. Fastball up and in. Fouled right off the forehead of that mask of Corey Blazer. Shakes it off, ready to go. And you saw Contreras turn immediately. He knew what had happened back there. You know what's interesting is that Hendricks, one more look at that play, loves his changeup. Because Rizzo has to hold on Rendon. Nice hole between Rizzo and Baez. And Murphy waves at it for strike three. Getting some funny swings from these Nationals hitters on that changeup. We said it before, during the regular season, 123 strikeouts by Kyle Hendricks. 60 of them came on the changeup. That's his fifth strikeout tonight. Two outs here in the bottom of the sixth for Ryan Zimmerman. Rounded out in the second. Five. Rounded into a double play when he broke his bat in the fourth. It's Brian Dunsing in the bullpen for the Cubs. Zimmerman 0 for 11 versus Kyle Hendricks. Either doesn't see the ball very well or he's due. What Hendricks has been able to do by keeping these Nationals off the bases negated that Washington running game among the league leaders and stolen bases and given him a bunch of uncomfortable at bats as Zimmerman swings right through that. And you know we always talk about and factor in how important it is as Contr Contreras goes out to speak to Hendricks about how important it is to be playing good baseball when you come into the postseason. Well, the Cubs behind the Cleveland Indians, who had a 22-game winning streak, played the best baseball behind the Twins in all of baseball. The Nationals, who clinched really early, their offensive play kind of shut down down the stretch. A lot of it because Bryce Harper wasn't in the lineup. But still, they weren't as hot as the Cubs were coming into this game. Count even at a ball and a strike, and here's the pitch to Zimmerman. To short. Russell goes the short way, and that'll do it for the Nats in the sixth. We head to the seventh, game one, two zip.
The 2017 National League Division Series is presented by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Top half of the seventh, Chicago leading 2-0, and Kyle Schwarber leading off against Steven Strasburg, untouchable through five. Gave up two runs in the sixth. Made Schwarber look bad there, 0-1. Schwarber, who spent some time in the minor leagues this year, they tried to get him to use the whole field. Came strictly pull in the beginning of the year when he was sitting under 200. Went to the minor leagues and hit much better, for better average, by going up the middle and to left field. 255 versus 171. He flied out to left his first time, struck out in the fifth. The 0 2 sailed high. 68 pitches now for Strasburg. At eight strikeouts, which is a Nats franchise record, the first 14 batters he faced. No strikeouts, the last eight batters he's faced. Breaking pitch and a seat. One down here in the seventh. Well, most of the hitters have been shaking their head on both sides. Just a breaking ball back door. So much break on it. That as a left handed hitter, you kind of give up on it. So there is strikeout number nine for Strasburg, who fanned 15 a season high against San Diego back in May. And seven times this year has had double digit strikeouts as Addison Russell waves at that offering. Russell was the Cubs only base runner through the first five innings. And they got to Strasburg in the sixth an error by Rendon on a high chopper. That was right down the line. And there's a base hit to left center field. Also in that sixth inning. Bryant and Rizzo with RBI singles. I'll rejoin Kenny Charles and Shaq on uh, opening night 2017 as the NBA returns presented by Auto Trader. Check your local listings. That's where the Wizards play. Tonight we're where the Nats play, Nationals Park. It's the Chinatown section of DC. Jason Hayward has flied to right and flied to center in two trips. He bats now with Russell at first and one down. He's been up there hacking. Hayward spent most of the winter this year trying to revamp his swing. He's gotten to a point where he's become really pull happy. And it's worked. He's had a much better year offensively this year but you know he has that hundred and eighty four million dollar tag applied to him so most expect more that'll be fouled out of play and obviously trying to put the memories you know the ultimate good memory is you win the World Series from an individual standpoint the postseason last year one for twelve against San Francisco one for sixteen against the Dodgers in three for 20 in the World Series. But again, you won it. <laughs> the most important thing he did in the postseason was to rain out speech he made to his ball club. No balls and two strikes. Now one and two. Oliver Perez warming in the Nats bullpen.
There goes the runner. There will be no throw. Russell swipes second. In scoring position now with one down. You, see, you could tell the pitch before he was trying to get a jump, and this time gets a great jump. And you could see Weeders, who's a good thrower, could not get a grip on that baseball and lost it. Cubs didn't steal many bags, only 62, which was 12th in the National League, but that could be a big one right there. That's a mile high, and Ryan Zimmerman wants it. Hayward avoided a collision at the last minute as Zimmerman made the play two down. Well, Hayward trying to get out of the way, and Zimmerman makes the play and looks back at Hayward. You know, Russell only had two stolen bases during the regular season, so. Sometimes in the post we've talked a lot about the Nationals and Trey Turner how his speed was going to be a difference Well, the Cubs with the first stolen base yeah, Here's Javier Baez now who led off the sixth with that high chopper to Rendon at third right on the line And Rendon made the error Baez came around to score On Chris Bryant single Pedro Strope Gets loose as John Jay has grabbed a bat. He's in the on deck circle and would hit for Hendricks. People are wondering how can John Jay be there, not Hendricks, who has six shutout innings. Only pitched seven innings this season, four times. He's one of those pitchers that Joe Madden just doesn't let get deep into a game, no matter how well he's pitched. Game seven last year of the World Series, four and two thirds, one run, taken out of the game. Diaz went fishing, and it's one and two. Kyle Hendricks shutting out the Nationals through six. Strasburg trying to get out of this inning with just a two nothing deficit. And he strikes out Baez for strikeout number 10. Time to stretch in DC.
2-0. Cubs with the lead. We head to the bottom half of the seventh. We go inside the booth. Presented by Vizio inside this booth. Ernie Johnson and Ron Darling. This was all about Steven Strasburg for the first five innings. No hitting the Chicago Cubs until Chicago got to him. Benefited from an error. Kyle Hendricks back out there again now for the bottom half of the seventh. It's probably the story of Kyle Hendricks' career that he over gets, over, uh, gets overlooked by the pitchers on other teams that have all that great natural physical stuff. But he just knows how to get it done. John Jay was in the on-deck circle. If he would have gotten a chance to get up, Hendricks would have been out of the game. He did not, and Joe Madden sent Hendricks out for the seventh inning. Defensive changes, Ben Zobris goes from right to left. Leonis Martin is the new center fielder, and Jason Hayward moves from center to right. Infield remains the same, battery remains the same. Nationals fans hope the score doesn't remain the same. It's 2-0 as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Jason Wirth will lead it off against Hendricks. He has taken a called third strike, walked in the fourth. I mean, Hendricks was 16 and 8 last year with a minuscule 2.13 ERA and 30 games started. This is the best game I've seen him pitch. Really, just with a fastball and changeup, just a handful of curveballs so far in this game. Blow it away to Worth. We've seen Dunsing up for a while, the left hander, and Stroke getting loose in the Cubs pen. He nibbled again and missed 2 0. Worth is not going to offer it much that's off the plate. Very disciplined hitter, works a lot of counts, and it's in his favor 2 0. Didn't think much of that two and one. Well, Hendricks just does not give in. Doesn't matter if it's 2-0, 3-0, he's always precise on those corners. And home plate umpire Blazer has had a nice strike zone for the pitchers. There's another strike two and two. Get a good look at Hendricks' face, and you can't tell if he's up two nothing or down 12-2. He just goes to work. Worth just reaches out and hits the tapper. Look at the bare hand play by Chris Bryant. Always amazing to watch those guys who can really play third make that bare hand play. Like there is nothing to it. And that ball was low when he made the play. And much tougher for an athlete like Chris Bryant, who's all a 6-5, to get all the way down there and in one motion get that ball to first base. He had to pick that one up off his shoe tops and throw him out. One down. Excellent play again on some more soft contact Hendricks, Hendricks gets from the Nationals offense. Now here's Weeders. And the shift employed by Joe Madden. The Cubs employ fewer shifts than anybody in baseball. But they'll do it here with Weeders. It's interesting because when Joe Madden was the, with the Tampa Bay Rays, they would employ the most shifts. So it's all organizationally. Teams think differently. They take all the same kind of information and use it in a different way. At 99 pitches now for Kyle Hendricks. Mentioned that his season high is 112. Soft contact into the shift. Baez throws him out for the second out. Sam Ryan, what's up? Yeah, EJ, well, the Nats' last hit in this game came in the second inning, and shortly before the game, the Nationals did release a statement saying that assistant hitting coach Jacques Jones has been suspended 
without pay. This pending an internal investigation pursuant to a legal matter. So minor league hitting coach Tony Gingrich, he takes over on an interim basis, guys. All right, thank you, Sam. Hendricks has gotten 20 outs in this game. 12 of them have come via the ground ball. And that's off the glove of Bryant, but look at Russell. Just late. That was not soft contact. That ball was hammered to third. And with the carom, Russell had a chance to throw him out. Well, Taylor was playing in because of the threat of the bunt and the ball to Bryant's left. Russell, no chance with the speed of Taylor. Here's the veteran Howie Kendrick who's going to pinch hit here in the seventh. Well, they got two big hitters on this bench for the Washington Nationals Howie Kendrick and Adam Lind. That's an error on Bryant. Well, an E5 led to a big inning for the Chicago Cubs and Washington hoping it's going to happen again. But that one came with two down. This one came with two down. Nats are one for eight with men on against Hendricks. Hendricks against Kendrick here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Got him from the Phillies on July 28th for minor leaguer Mackenzie Mills. And he played 52 games, nearly hit 300 with seven homers and 25 runs batted in. Five. Two and one. Howie Kendrick is. 30 games of postseason experience with the Angels and the Dodgers. It's an interesting choice, though, by Dusty Baker, not Adam Lind, who really gives him that home run threat where he needs it. Ooh. Obviously, Dusty didn't like the matchup. If he brought Lind in, maybe Brian Dunsing comes in the game. Small sample size, two out of three, but Kendrick with success against the Chicago starter. And Lind, three for 16, of uh, Brian Dunson. So Lind waits his turn patiently. Two balls and two strikes. Taylor with a lead at first. And now a pause. No one throws the ball around the diamond more than Wilson Contreras. So you have to watch out if you're Taylor on first base. Loves to snap throw it down to first. And Kendrick strikes out. Hendricks got him. His sixth strikeout. The lead remains 2 0. Chicago.
Stadium. Diamondbacks and Dodgers game one of their NLDS best of five. Brian Anderson and Joe Simpson. And Eck ready to go. It's the National League Division Series presented by T-Mobile. Ryan Madsen is on in relief of Steven Strasburg. Well, one of the big moves, one of the three big moves that Mike Rizzo made to shore up that bullpen. Madsen, Kinsler, and Doolittle. John Jay pinch hitting to lead off the eighth. He was in the on-deck circle in the seventh. But they never got to the pitcher's spot. Madsen's got the most experience in the postseason. Mostly with the Phillies, Kansas City Royals. 42 games he has been in. This is 43rd ERA under three. Record of four and one. And Jay's got the most experience on the Chicago side. He's been in 58 playoff games with St. Louis. Looking for his first postseason home run. He's hitting 232. He's knocked in 15 runs. Madsen has been quite the story, though. You got to admit, Ronnie, that where he has been and where he is right now after uh, basically retiring at one point and then he finally gets signed. And then has Tommy John surgery when he was with Cincinnati. Grounded foul. And he he attributes much of the success of that comeback to something called the accelerated performance machine. It's an electric therapy machine. He had a teammate whose landlord was using it for his knee and suggested he try that therapy. Now he swears by it as Jay lifts one into left and that's going to fall for a base hit. Jay's got great speed. He's into second. Lead off double in the eighth. Good pitch by Madsen jams John Jay who just dumps it into left field and it stays fair. You could play small ball here if you wanted to with Zobris but he's such a professional hitter you'd think that it might be easy for him to get the runner over. He's got to get him over. Zobrist is 0 for 3. And he knows pulling a ball to the right side there will do just that. Get Jay over to third, where a fly ball would bring him in with some insurance. They're up to zip. Zobrist always been a favorite of Joe Madden, had him in Tampa Bay. And for Ben, he's looking for the hat trick. On the champion Royals, on the champion Cubs. You can see him really trying to steer that ball, steer to, the that ball side to the side. right side. But it's got him a no two hole. I mean, in some ways, Ben Sobris owes his career to Joe Madden, who had. The ability to think outside the box and use Sobrist in many different capacities on on the field. His versatility made him into a great player. World Series MVP for the Chicago team a year ago. Goes down swinging for out number one. Couldn't move Jay over. Let's take a look at Statcast powered by Amazon Web Services. This was that barehanded play by Chris. Brown. It not only did he have to reach for it, but on that second hop, it took a little jump towards the foul line. 
And not only did he field it clean, but got a lot on that throw. Sparkling defensive play, and the guy who knocked in the first Chicago run in the sixth when they were being no hit. Jay with the lead at second. Ball hit up the middle. Murphy will throw him out. Jay moves over to third, but now two down. That brings up Rizzo, who knocked in the other Chicago run in the sixth. Well, there's a couple of different ways to look at this if you're Dusty and, and Ryan Madsen. You could put him on, which they're not going to do, because you think that Madsen, a veteran, is going to know to try to get Rizzo to get himself out. What does that mean? Pitch to spots that are out of the strike zone, and hopefully Rizzo is chase. Misses with the first one, 1-0. and Rizzo struck out his first two times and then delivered the run scoring single in the sixth that scored Bryant who had gone to second on the throw after his RBI single. If he goes 2-0 and on Rizzo it's going to have to be very tempting for Dusty to just put him on. One and one. You're talking about the injury that almost stopped Ryan Madsen's career. He had a small injury in August also this year. Missed some time with a sprained finger a couple of weeks in August. In the dirt and Weeders blocked it. Kept John Jay at third. Well it's a little bit of the problem you have with the shifting. Rendon's off the base so far at third. John Jay can get so far down the line that anything that gets away from Weeders, just the smallest amount, junk, John Jay could take a shot. Even up at two and two. Time running out in this game, eighth inning. Nationals faithful. Want to see Madsen close the door and keep it a two run game. The 37 year old righty to the plate. Weeder's got the business end of that foul too. Well the book on Rizzo when you get ahead of him is that you have to try to crowd him and you have to throw fastballs upstairs. But you see Weeders take that off the mask. Here comes the 2 2. Tough at bat by Rizzo as he fouls that off. Rizzo's getting some good swings. Top of the order due for the Nationals in the eighth. Trying to get out number three here in the top half. Rizzo not given an inch either. So many numbers to to bite on if you're the Nationals and pitching to Rizzo here. Madsen's been, been going right after him because the number they have on the hitter and on deck Contreras he's 23 for his last 52 with runners in scoring position. So the matchup is Madsen going after Rizzo. To left field, that ball will get down and knock in a run. It rattles around in the corner, and Rizzo standing at second in a 3 nothing game. What a huge two-out hit. 
Well, we talked about it during his last at bat. Unlike many sluggers who just for every pitch they see are trying to hit the ball at the ballpark, with two strikes, he shortens up, tries to put the ball in play, and he's rewarded with this opposite field hit. Great job of hitting by Rizzo and a great reaction from that Cubs bench. Mike Maddox is the Nationals pitching coach. And he's having a word with Madsen. That's just good hitting by Rizzo. Nobody up in the Washington pit. You know, you don't want to tip your cap to the hitter. But boy, with two strikes, he just gets tougher, does Anthony Rizzo. Decided not to walk Rizzo and face Contreras in that situation. It cost the Nationals. Now they'll walk Wilson Contreras. The foot runners at first and second. And Leonis Martin will bat for the first time tonight. Came on as a defensive replacement. Well, with the runners in scoring position, we told you about Contreras 23 for 52. That's why he's walked. Or Dusty decides to walk him, but this is a small sample size too. But Leonis Martin against Madsen, three for five. A distinct silence and uneasiness has descended over Nationals Park here in a three nothing game now in the eighth. Oliver Perez back up and throwing in the Nats pin. Martin started the year in Seattle was designated for assignment in April after he hit a 111 in 15 games. The Cubs picked him up at the end of August. He actually made his debut as with the Cubs as a pitcher. In a mop up game. Might have the best arm of their outfielders including Hayward. Breaking pitch stayed upstairs. Two and one. Seen it before. Madsen's been a solid eighth inning guy for their Dusty Baker's team, but Cubs have gotten to him for a run here in the eighth. Really, they remade the bullpen which was the really weak point of this team in the first half. Kinsler became their seventh inning guy. Madsen their eighth inning guy. Doolittle in the ninth. It became a swing and miss bullpen. Yes. From a bullpen that blew 14 saves during the first half. Two balls and two strikes to Martin. Cubs lead from first and second, and there's strike three called. Martin knew it, but the Cubs had the lead. Three nothing, middle of the eighth.
Time for records and milestones presented by Jim Beam. Drink smart. Coming up next on TBS, Dodgers and the Diamondbacks. Cody Bellinger with those 39 home runs as a rookie setting a record. A couple of very familiar foes from the National League West in that best of five. For more records and milestones, go to BleacherReport.com. Well, you really feel as though with Trey Turner leading off this inning, this is maybe the last chance for the Nationals. Davis has been so good as their ninth inning closer. Carl Edwards Jr. also has been outstanding as their setup man. John Jay in left field now. Ben Zobrist out of the game. Top of the order here in the bottom of the eighth, and Trey Turner leads it off. Takes a strike. Carl Edwards Jr. 95 plus on his fastball and a big hook to go with it. What an effort by Strasburg. 10 strikeouts, seven fine innings. Just gave up a couple of points in the sixth. Slender pitcher, slender hitter here in the Edwards Turner matchup. Ball and a strike. Turner 0 for 3. Pops it foul. It's one pitch that Edwards Jr. has added to his repertoire. It's that little cut fastball that he's using against the right handed hitter. One two from Carl Edwards Jr. is strike three to Turner, who is 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. Well, everyone came into this game talking about the difference maker that Trey Turner could present to this Cubs team. Was not able to get on base in his four at bats. Seventh strikeout by Chicago pitching. Hendricks was spectacular. Allowed two hits. No hits after the second inning. Walk three and struck out six. And shut out the Nats through seven. Harper into right field and Baez makes a great running play. I know that Baez was in the shift. But there's no second baseman in baseball that makes that play. None. Great speed. I think it's always underrated. We never talk about infielders and how they go back on a ball that's over their head. Baez, they call him El, El Majo for the magician. A magical play. He wound up behind right fielder Jason Hayward at the end of that play. Flags it down for the second out, and here's Rendon. Ah. Rendon is 0 for 2. He walked in the sixth. And it was an error by Rendon on a ball hit right down the line. A high chopper. He lost the ball against his thigh as he brought it down to get it out of his glove. And it paved the way for a two run inning by the Chicago Cubs. And this time of year it's it's decision making it's bobbles it's base hits it's making big pitches. It's playoff baseball and all the RBIs for the Cubs came out with two outs. Clutch hitting. Rizzo with two of those RBIs. Chris Bryant with the other. Guys on the corners of this Chicago infield. And corner stones in what has been a championship run. 
last year and what ho they hope is a repeat after waiting forever for that first one. Rendon only has one at bat against Edwards. That resulted in a home run, though. He hit 25 of them this year and knocked in 100 runs. I'd have to say Ron Culpa, the first base umpire, has the safe sign on the check swing working tonight. <laughs> Nothing close. Full count to Rendon. And Edwards lets it fly. Strike three called. Edwards strikes out two out of three. It's three nothing, and we're heading to the ninth. All right, thank you, Case. We head to the ninth, three-nothing game. Addison Russell leads it off against the new Nats pitcher Brandon Kinsler. Well, Kinsler for most of the year was the ninth inning man for the Minnesota Twins. 28 saves over there when he was traded to the Washington Nationals. One save as a National. Doesn't strike out anyone. Not an overpowering pitcher. Averages about five strikeouts every nine innings pitched. 
Yes, there's another guy. You know, the Madsen story has a lot of layers to it, and Kinsler does too. He was out of pro ball in 05. Went to Winnipeg and played in a independent Northern League. Tried construction work for a while. Was a valet at the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas in 2009 where he was picking up celebrities and taking them to the airport. And then stuck with baseball and Milwaukee gave him a shot in 2010. Really credits his stepfather for saying, hey, look, get a real job. Do something. Be serious about it. And he, he went after it. And there is the guy who has meant trouble for opponents in this season, blowing only one save, Wade Davis, ready to go to work in the bottom half of this inning. Well, Russell's got a walk and a base hit, stolen base. He's taking some great at bats in this ball game. Nibbled at the corner and missed. Ball and two strikes. Well, that's a pitch that I think Anthony Rendon thought he was called out on in the prior inning. Kinsler doesn't get the call. Powell pass third. It remains one and two. This is, you know, Kinsler with, was with Minnesota, and when, when the Twins traded him, it was like, okay, you're going to be sellers now. They wind up. Still earning the wild card spot, the second one in the American League. Sensational season for Paul Molitor's guys. A 1 2 from Kinsler to Russell. Yeah, it was almost like Minnesota. As soon as they decided they were out of it, then they started to be back in it. Then they did it without Kinsler. We welcome those of you who have been watching the Indians and the Yankees and Cleveland winning that game with Jan Gomes delivering the game winner in extra innings. Scott Cockrell our producer I'm I'm kind of busy doing this game so how did that end Scotty walk off digger by Jan Gomes. In which inning? 13th inning, I believe. I think off Jan off the Tonsis. Off Dylan Batansis. Boy, Yankees had a big lead in that game, too, and the Indians at home came storming back. So they're up to love. Russell takes a call, third strike. Didn't think much of it. One down. Let's take a look at tonight's cars.com five tool play of the game. Anthony Rizzo knocked in two of the three Chicago runs. Well, he doesn't wear a letter C, but he's kind of the de facto captain of this Cubs team. Reminder, get the car shopping tools you need at cars.com. Here's Jason Hayward. He's 0 for 3. If you're just joining us or you were flipping back and forth between that Indians Yankees game and this game. We are scoreless through five. Steven Strasburg had not allowed a hit going to the sixth inning. And then an error by Rendon at third. And yeah. Opened the door. But still, after a sacrifice bunt and a fly out to center field, the game was scoreless till Bryant singled and then Rizzo singled behind him. 
pleading two runs. Brian on an 0-2 pitch. And they added another one in the eighth on Rizzo's RBI single. Kyle Hendricks, magnificent in his start for Chicago. He went seven, allowed just two hits, struck out six. Carl Edwards worked a scoreless eighth, and Wade Davis is ready to come on in the ninth. A ball and two strike as strikes as Kinsler works against Jason Hayward. Almost hit him. In did. fact, it did. Again, Ronnie, I didn't feel that one up here. <laughs> you did it. Just a fastball in. I don't know if it caught the jersey. Yeah, just the edge of the jersey there Almost for it. Hayward. It's the NLDS logo up there on the <laughs> right sleeve. So Hayward aboard with one down. And here is Baez, and be careful with that first one. Baez is the guy who hit the high chopper to Rendon at third and reached on the error in the sixth and scored the game's first run. Other two times he struck out. Two of the ten strikeouts that Strasburg registered. Here comes the 0-1. Murphy to Zimmerman. 4-3 double play ends the top of the ninth. Washington down three heading to the bottom half. The 2017 National League Division Series is presented by T-Mobile. Nationals are down to their last three outs. Trailing by three runs. 
And Wade Davis, the Cubs' closer, is on. He's only blown one save all season, and that was in his last opportunity. And with a three-run lead, he's eight for eight in saves this year, but he's going to have to go through Murphy, Zimmerman, and Worth. Leonis Martinez moved over to left field. Albert Amoral Jr. has come into play center. First pitch to Murphy is low, ball one. A lot of talk around town here is that the Nats were so powerful for the first five months of the year offensively. But in September, they only averaged 3.8 runs a game. They batted 233. And a lot of people wondered if they could turn it on in the postseason. They haven't tonight. Count even a ball and a strike. Murphy is a professional hitter. But tonight, a line out, a walk, and a strikeout. And one for four in his career against the Cubs' closer. That blown save by Davis came against Milwaukee late in the season. I mentioned it was his last opportunity. He'd been perfect. And then Orlando Arcia hit a home run off him to tie the game in the ninth. And then he gave up a two run game winner, the walk off to Travis Shaw in Milwaukee. Kind of blew that game twice. Yeah, because the Cubs had come back. On a John Jay hit to take the lead in the top half of the tenth before Travis Shaw unloaded. One ball and two strikes to Murphy. Wade Davis started some games early in his career for Joe Madden in Tampa Bay. He was traded to Kansas City. They wanted him to go into the bullpen. He told Ned Yost, their manager, I will, but I only want to pitch if I'm going to get some important outs at the end of the game. That's all he does now. Rounded to second. Baez into that shift. Comes in from the short outfield grass to make the play. Let's go to Atlanta. Casey Stern. All right, Chase. We'll get you out there when we are done here. One down in the ninth. Ryan Zimmerman. 0 for 3. This is the 24th game in the postseason for Wade Davis. The game he started was his debut in the postseason with Tampa Bay everything else out of the pen. Yeah that law firm they had working in Kansas City of Herrera Davis and Holland was about as good a pen as we've seen in the postseason didn't lose a case. <laughs> Yeah, that kind of tells you the way it's gone at Nationals Park for the Washington faithful tonight. Down to their last two outs. A ball and two strikes to Zimmerman. Well, what you're looking for from one of your best pitchers is one of those big outings. And you'd have to say that Strasburg had it. Seven innings, no earned runs, two runs given up, ten punch outs, but it wasn't enough. Kyle Hendricks was better. Ball in the dirt, swung on and missed. They will throw it out the first one. They hit Zimmerman in the back, and they're going to call him out for being inside the baseline. Boy, this is going to get Dusty out. Corey Blazer went out immediately, threw up the fist, and called Zimmerman out.
when the ball's in the dirt, C Contreras makes the throw. Do you see where Zimmerman is? He's got to be between those two white lines. That's the base running line for a hitter when he's running down to first base, whether it's on a hit ball or a ball in the dirt. And he gets hit right in the numbers, but he's outside the line in fair territory, and he's called out by the umpires. All six members of this umpiring crew in on this discussion. You know, a runner outside of the base, base path, we know is non-reviewable play. But I've always known that on a play to first base, the runner running to first has to be between those two lines or he's out. Well, he was definitely not in the lane on his way to first. You can see Jerry Lane as the crew chief telling Dusty that it's not reviewable if you read his lips. Zimmerman comes out about five feet in play, trying to work himself back towards the base and work himself back towards the baseline, but never got there. And Nationals fans don't like it, and you hear the boos, but I'm sure when they go home and they watch that replay, they will look at it and say, he was not in the lane. I think when they look at it later, they're going to say, we need to change the rule. <laughs> With all the bad stuff that has happened here in their nine home games in the post. So now here's Jason Worth, and he's the last hope. The Nationals haven't had a hit since the second inning. First one misses to Worth, who's 0 for 2 with a walk. Popped him up. Contreras calls. And that is a game one shutout by the Chicago Cubs of the Washington Nationals in this best of five.